Dalvina, Guia de Losana, Angita Talita Kinia Navarro, Nambula FM, and Golden Point Resort, Basendo Nambando and Ahere, Vinaka. Bula Vinaka, and other Gotevita, or two and ninety. Anda tak lihat kalau lebaran baru mana bulan FM, nampun dua ni sel. Nada kau macam leh sih, berkeraki NSB nampun bulan FM nampun dua ni sel. Kalau ngau rakyat kita ni kita buat, anda tak lihat kalau lebaran mana bulan FM, nampun dua ni sel. Ungu boleh nusuk. Bulan FM nampun dua ni sel. Good evening, this is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Tonight, police received complaints of sexual harassment in evacuation centers. Government and the United Nations launch humanitarian appeal for people affected by Cyclone Winston. And RFMF Police and Correction Services heads appointed. Even the safety of an evacuation center is not safe for everyone. A few cases of sexual harassment and one of rape have been reported to have occurred in evacuation centers since tropical cyclone Winston hit. This has been confirmed by Police Commissioner Brigadier General Sitiveni Ngilio. Akusita Tale has the details. People forced to live in evacuation centers around the country have been warned of criminal activities like sexual harassment and rape. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Sitiveni Ngiliho says they've noticed some despicable people are taking advantage of Fiji's current situation and are committing criminal assaults against others. Keep in mind that uh, they have been through a hard time and to not make matters worse by getting involved in illegal activities. Our women and children are there in evacuation centers and they are the most vulnerable. It is their duty and responsibility to look after them, not to take advantage of the vulnerable. And if uh, cases uh, do come up, I can assure the people of Fiji that they, it will be investigated uh, promptly and people produced in court. Brigadier General Gilly Ho says some officers involved in assisting divisional commissioners on the ground with rations and relief supplies have returned to the force. This is to ensure that their commitment to maintain law and order is secured at all times. So we will continue to do that with more frequency now with the release of our mobility assets. And if we have the manpower to release into the bigger evacuation centers to have them permanently positioned there, that's what we have undertaken. Brigadier General Gilly Ho says they are on the lookout for indecent and illegal activities in evacuation centers. It's only a handful of cases uh, that have come up, but uh, we are continuously um, on the, the lookout that these things do, uh, can, can, uh, can happen if we don't uh, continue to monitor uh, uh, people in the, in the evacuation centers or in the affected areas. Uh, there are desperate people out there after what we've uh, been through, uh, and we don't want things to, to get worse. 24 rape and 11 sexual assault offenses topped the list for the month of February alone. Akusita Talei, FBC News. The government and the United Nations have launched a Fijian $81.85 million humanitarian appeal for the 350,000 people affected by Tropical Cyclone Winston. This, as the government estimates the cost of damage from Tropical Cyclone Winston, will top Fijian $1 billion. Farzana Nisha has more. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama says during his visits around the affected areas, he has come across some communities which have lost almost all. I have seen their pain, shared their sense of loss, the trauma of losing their loved ones, losing their homes, the big things that mattered to them, like their schools or places of worship, the little things like a family photo or a treasured possession. I've tried to put myself in their place to give them comfort, to tell them that as a nation, we are all behind them. The Prime Minister says people in the most dire situation greeted him with a smile and were greatly moved by his visit. Winston did not destroy the spirit of the Fijian people. In fact, it has made them stronger. All over Fiji, 
people have held up signs saying stronger than Winston. And every Fijian knows it is true. We are stronger than Winston. We will recover and we will rebuild. And we will do so with our many friends in the community of nations with whom we stand so proudly and especially at this time. Rani Marama thanked the governments of Australia, New Zealand, India and France for their logistics support and extraordinary effort in helping Fiji. UN Humanitarian Coordinator Osnet Lubrani says this initial support to overcome the massive scale of devastation is just the start. We will need to help those people affected uh, to rebuild their lives for the future. The UN and its, its international partners stand by to support the government and the people in any way we can now, but also for the longer term recovery efforts. We are here for the long haul. Shelter, health, water, food security, sanitation and hygiene, education and protection have been identified as the most urgent needs and are covered by projects in the appeal. This appeal is a preliminary estimate of needs and is open to revision as assessments are completed. Farzana Nisha, FBC News. The Constitutional Officers Commission has confirmed the appointments of the RFMF Police and Correction Senior Officers following a meeting of the Constitutional Office, Officers Commission today. President Chiochi Conrote has appointed Rear Admiral William Enalpoto as the commander of the RFMF. Brigadier General Siti Veningilio has been appointed as the police commissioner. Commander Francis Keane, who was former PS Infrastructure, has been appointed as the commissioner of the Fiji Correction Service. All the three appointments have been made effective from today. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama has urged people affected by tropical cyclone Winston to be patient about the provision of relief assistance. Mbani Marama made this comment while visiting affected villages on the island of Ovalau. Ali Kimbia has more. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama has apologized to the people of Ovalau due to the delay in the distribution of food rations in some of the villages on the island. Visiting over 10 villages who were severely affected, Bani Marama didn't mince his words, saying his intention is to ensure the well-being of all Fijians. I want to apologize to all of you that sometimes assistance can be late. I was saying to all the villages I have visited that not many knew of the extent of damage that Winston brought to Fiji. The damages here in Vuma is also in Koro, Vanuambalavu, and many other islands in the Lomaiviti group. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has told villagers here in Vuma to accept the fact that more places in the country are isolated and relief assistance will be delayed. Mbaini Marama says that the government will ensure that all Fijians who are affected by tropical cyclone Winston will get a fair share of relief assistance. Mbaini Marama says the government will assist the villagers in rebuilding their lives. The government is trying its best to assist those whose houses were destroyed and also students who had their schools destroyed. The government will try and get things back to normal. Villagers were content with the first wave of food rations and for the Prime Minister to visit them with assistance was something that brought back the unique Fijian smile. I want to thank the government that some assistance have been given to us like tarpaulins, water, temporary houses and what we needed daily, especially the assistance to help our kids and elderly. We are thankful to the government that we are able to be assisted. We can say that God has provided this and for the government to really help us in time of need we don't know what else to say. Despite the devastating destruction left by T.C. Winston, many of the villagers have started rebuilding their lives. One of the worst affected villages in Obalau is Nowuwu. The massive destruction was just speechless. <laughs> Banimarama also took time yesterday to thank inmates from Namboro who were deployed to the island to assist in the rebuilding of St. John's College in Rawadi. Bainamarama also held discussions in all the villages he visited and enlightened them on government's plan to assist in rebuilding their lives. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. 
Ten students from Queen Victoria School have been questioned and released due to the alleged theft that occurred at the time when Tropical Cyclone Winston hit Fiji two weeks ago. At the time of the alleged offence, most of the boarders had gone home due to the cyclone. Chief of Intelligence and Investigations ACP Luke Navela says statements of the students have been recorded and most of them who are involved are juveniles. Two laptops and students' belongings like jerseys have been recovered. What we are currently doing uh uh, getting um, information uh, from uh, the students at uh, QBS and uh, at the same time we are conducting an inquiry and uh, interviewing uh, people who are involved uh, in uh, this uh, case, more to come and uh, hopefully uh, we'll finalize the case uh, soon. Novella says police investigations are continuing. A number of schools continue to be used as evacuation centres across the country. However, Education Minister Dr Mahendra Reddy is now pleading with those evacuees currently in schools to arrange alternative housing. Maggie Boyle reports. In the aftermath of Cyclone Winston, the UN estimates that more than 24,000 homes have been damaged or destroyed. With more than 350,000 people displaced, schools as a temporary evacuation shelter has been a mainstay for most. But evacuees are now being asked to try and move to other alternatives. I'm also urging the uh, members of the community uh, who are using schools as evacuation centers, if they could uh, make alternative arrangements and uh, clean up the school, uh, ASAP so that uh, classes can resume. Education Minister Dr Mahendra Reddy is sympathetic of the situation, but returning children to their classrooms is a priority. He adds other government agencies are on the ground to assist where they can. The DISPEC uh, is working very closely with uh, the members of the community to see if they could, if they could organize alternative uh, arrangements for housing so that uh, these members of the community could vacate the schools. Uh, approximately um, 95 schools at the moment are being used as evacuation centre. More than 60,000 children have missed school and a few hundred now continue to in the aftermath of Cyclone Winston's destruction. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Still to come, Fiji Roads Authority works overtime to ensure relief supplies can get to those still in need after Tropical Cyclone Winston. Yandra, I love listening to Gold FM at Golden Point Resort. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hola, my name is General from Black Hills. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic. I'm Moses from Valley. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Marie the Manaco. I'm from Kandavu. I like listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Silipa from Tavo Town. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Welcome back. This is FBC News. There are 722 evacuation centers open around the country, of which 69 are schools. National Disaster Management Office Akapusi Tuifangalele says there are 29,237 evacuees. The Methodist Church of Fiji has also volunteered to help accommodate these people in their churches and halls who have lost their entire homes. Tuifangalele says they are trying to encourage people to move back to their homes and begin to rebuild their lives and not be too independent dependent, sorry, on the government. The Biosecurity Authority of Fiji has also advised that for health reasons, affected livestock as well as carcasses should not be moved or movement needs to be restricted. The in Fiji have already put up their hands that they can assist uh, for those uh, in their respective uh, parishes, their, you know, their areas, eh? or, or people can move in there. Uh, the other issue is that we are also getting big tents from um, uh, overseas eh, being flown over that can also be another alternative to be used. But the issue of uh, evacuation centers you'd like to mention to uh, the general public is that uh, it is only temporary. Tui Fangalele adds that the death toll still remains at 43. 
The main priority of the Fiji Roads Authority right now is ensuring damaged roads and jetties are repaired to ensure relief supplies can get to those still in need after tropical cyclone Winston. FRA acting CEO Rory Garland says more funds are being injected for repairs to ensure that work is done in an effective and efficient way. Savarit Thambua has more. The Fiji Roads Authority has completed 95% of the first phase of its recovery program pertaining to maintenance of roads and jetties in cyclone-devastated areas. The authority says the focus is on fixing damaged roads, access to affected schools and areas. The main objective was to uh, enable the free flow of supplies and goods between the towns and cities and between the islands. Uh, and to allow the access for the emergency services to the worst stricken areas. Uh, we completed that largely within about three or four days and then we moved into a secondary phase where we started to go into some of the more rural areas and open up the roads there where people were badly affected by the storm. Gallen says a full assessment of the damage will be carried out after the second phase along with permanent structure designs. Uh, we're already starting to assess the damage on uh, roads and bridges and crossings and jetties across Fiji. Uh, once we finish that assessment, we will start to um, go into a more permanent repair phase where we uh, go around uh, and fix up the, the bridges and roads and jetties so that they'll be uh, in a long-term condition for ongoing sustainable use. FRA has $3 million in its emergency fund, but Rory says the authority have allocated more into that fund from other areas to ensure that enough resources are available to meet immediate needs. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. Damage to Fiji's water systems is expected to run into the millions of dollars. Water Authority of Fiji Chief Executive Opita Ravai says the figure rises from their initial assessment. Sainiani Mboila has more. WEF is well underway with its damage assessment after tropical cyclone Winston devastated most of its 227 pumping stations around the country. It will run into the millions. Eh? But so far we've supplied about 6.5 million litres of water through trucks. You know, these trucks cost about $1,000 a day to hire. Um, so, you know, it's when this is finished, when we finish our water cutting, when we finish repairing all the 233 rural uh, schemes, we will then determine uh, the final figure, but uh, definitely it will run into the millions. WEF has revealed that most of these pumping stations are currently running on its backup systems. Most of our systems are um, in the west, from Tabua to Mba uh, and Rakiraki are running on Gen Church at the moment. As you know, the uh, power restoration, that area will be um, uh, delayed further because of uh, the amount of damage that's caused in the, the power lines in the Kings Road and in the surrounding areas. Ravai adds a distribution plant in southern Tabiuni was severely damaged. WEF personnel left for Tabiuni and the Lao Group yesterday to assess areas affected and begin with water restoration. Work is almost done in most urban areas as Water Authority of Fiji now concentrates on the 233 villages that are currently affected. Ravai says they are working hard to restore our water system as soon as possible. Saini Animboila, FBC News. The Catholic Church is playing a more active role in helping those affected by severe tropical cyclone Winston. The church has deployed teams to assess the damage and provide people in these affected areas with much needed help and comfort. Ellen Stalls tells us why. The Catholic Church is mobilizing people and taking a very active role after such an incredibly life-changing devastation. Archbishop Father Peter Loy Chong says teams will be sent to places like Ra and Tawasamu parts of Vanuelevu and Taviuni to see what is needed and help in any way they can. Something that we have been trying to put together uh, about two years ago, you know, anticipating uh, disasters. Previously, Catholic Church uh, uh, has not been that well structured or strategized to meet this uh, disaster. Under the leadership of the Archbishop, the team is ready to help with donations from members and people willing to assist, which are still coming in. 
Well, this is a perfect opportunity for the Catholic Church to reach out to its members and those who have been affected by Tropical Cyclone Winston. Archbishop says it's also a time to reach out and tend to their spiritual needs. In these times, people not only ask for food and money, but also search for the deeper questions of why, why is this happening, you know? Counseling is where Father Frank Hoare comes in. With over 25 years of experience in psychology, the priest says the effects of the cyclone, if left unchecked, could be deeper than people know. The children who went through this trauma may easily regress and become more like they were two or three years ago. Uh, they, they may start sucking their thumb or they, they may cry easily or they may be clinging. So it's important not to, not to um, reject that, but rather to accept it. And for instance, to give plenty of hugs, to reassure them. By On a positive note, Father Horn says Fiji's culture and communal living and extended families provide a web of support that helps them cope in such hard times. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Fijians who have been tangled in a dispute for a long time and had no means to take the matter to court can now get justice by mediation services facilitated by the Fiji Mediation Centre. Chief Justice Anthony Gates says Fijians can now take their grievances and disputes to the centre against financial institutions, insurance companies, traders and service providers. A forum was held in Suva this morning to discuss on the way forward for the newly established centre, which included code of conduct, policy and procedures, fee structure and public awareness campaign strategy. We seem to have uh, lost that ability to reach out for mediation, reach out for a resolution rather than I'm determined not to agree with those people. We want to get rid of that attitude. We want to have a determination to resolve the problem and to agree with people as far as we can. Civil judges, resident magistrates and 14 accredited mediators were part of the discussions. And on that note, it's Sports Now. Here's Jamie with the very latest. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. Coming up in Sports Tonight, QBS Rugby site to tour Japan next month. And Youngster Eyes Olympic Games. We'll have this and more after the break. मैं उरियान खान गुरबो तालेबू के जैसे फेस्टिवल ए ग्रेट है गुरबो में उसी तरह मिर्ची एफएम नंबर 1 है गुरबो में एलीन लटका में मिर्ची एफएम को लॉक कर दिया जाए मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट हम नकाशी से सायमाने हम फेस्टिवल जैसे नंबर 1 है वैसे मिर्ची एफएम नंबर 1 है माय नेम इज दिनेश हम नेंडी में काम करता है स्लीपिंग जॉइंट सप्लाई में और मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट पे आई लाइक इट मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट Vodafone Fiji 7's reps Tosua Vivi and Masive Sindakuwanga are set to make their international debuts in the Las Vegas 7's this weekend. Coach Ben Ryan has named the pair in his 12-member squad for the USA leg, opting to rest star players Pio Tuwai and Jerry Tuwai. Meanwhile, Wallaby star Quade Cooper will get his first run in a World Series tournament after being named in the Australian squad. South Africa has named a star-studded lineup, which includes Brian Habana, Cephal Cecil Africa, Branko Dupriz and Justin Giddeld. Sonny Bill Williams was left out of the New Zealand side, but the Kiwis still pack a lot of punch with key players such as Liam Messam, DJ Forbes, Gillies Kaka and Kurt Baker. The Las Vegas 7s begins tomorrow and you can watch it live right here on FBC TV. The Queen Victoria School Under-18 Rugby side will be playing for more than just school pride in Japan next month. The team has had to relocate to Suba to prepare for the Sanex World Rugby Youth Tournament, but after, after Cyclone Winston damaged their school, Charlie Ndadakadaka has more. Queen Victoria School may have suffered significant damage due to TC Winston and its students enrolled in other schools around the country, but these players will be out to keep the school spirit intact during the Sanex World Rugby Youth Tournament next month. It did not dampen the spirits of the boys. Uh, despite the fact that most of the boys are now uh, deployed in other schools, uh, this is one way that we can show the uh, 
the QBS boys the, the will need to spirit will never be dampened. The team has been camping at the QBS Old Boys Clubhouse in Suva for the past two weeks, living on the generosity of parents, teachers, as well as the old scholars to prepare for the tournament. The chance to compete in Japan came about after the side won the Dean's Under-17 title last year. It comprises of all the, the established, well-known schools from around the, the countries, in the, around the world, 16 countries, and they will be playing in this tournament. And from there, we hope that it's going to uh, strengthen our plan towards uh, the Dean's uh, tournament, Dean's trophy for next term. The players are also being helped by national scrum coach Alan Muir and former national rep William Ngandolo. What started off as just a tour to build up ahead of the Dean's competition has turned into a mission to unite QVS students all over the country after the devastating effects of T.C. Winston. Thailand, Dr. Kataka, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji under-20 rugby side has upped the tempo of training as the Junior World Trophy in Zimbabwe fast approaches. The 30-member squad assembled in Suva this morning and went through a mental training exercise with a recognized psychologist before moving to the team camp in Asese, where the players will be based for the weekend. Today is our mental session by Dr. Galin. In the afternoon, we will be with uh, Ellen Miwa, the expertise coaches, Moses Roluni. And we need that uh, knowledge for the boys. Eh? And uh, the focus is on uh, the, the set pieces. Eh? And uh, the, uh, that is where these expertise coaches, who specialist coaches, come in. The Junior World Trophy will be held in Zimbabwe on April 19th to May 1st. Fiji is pooled with the hosts Uruguay and Samoa. 21-year-old Joseph Turangambedi is living his dream in the Vodafone Fiji under-23 camp. The marksman who plies his trade in New Zealand is one of the hopefuls trying to earn a ticket to the Rio Olympics. Rohit Deo caught up with him at training today. <laughs> Inspiration from his dad led him to take up football as a career, and he is not regretting it. Joseph Turangambedi says he is enjoying his stint with the Fiji under-23s. Uh, the stint so far is very well, it's very organised. Um, the, the trainings are well planned, obviously because of Frank Farina. He's bringing the philosophy into the Fiji game. Um, and it's good, the trainings are, uh, are, are good, sharp, fast. And a decent, it's a good workout each and every day that we have with Frank and we learn a lot, a lot from him. The Waitakere City player says he is eyeing a sport in the final squad to the Rio Olympic Games, but knows it's not going to be easy. Definitely, definitely want to get into the final squad. Uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity um, and, and it's, it's good for exposure for Fiji football. Uh, we'll, be, we'll put Fiji in the, on the map of football around the world. Turangambedi has also represented the Auckland youth team and has played four games for the Fiji under-17 side. Meanwhile, the national team with under-23 sides have been in camp for a week now at the Fiji football headquarters in Suva. Rohit Dev, FBC Sports. The Fiji Football Association will hold a board of control meeting tomorrow to reshuffle its calendar of events. The Vodafone Premier League matches has been postponed due to the devastation caused by Cyclone Winston and is due to resume in the first week of April. The board will decide on the new dates of the awards night with the venues of the three major tournaments also to be finalised. We have to really look at our uh, plan for the year and the calendar and everything and uh, we'll discuss it tomorrow and uh, see how what the outcome is. This is something that... Uh, uh, the international events don't change and we have to make sure as Fiji football that uh, we are participating in it and we have to move on. The meeting will be held at the Fiji FA headquarters in Bar on Sunday. And that is your sports for this evening. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> Thank you.
Merchant Finance and Investment Limited will now be known as Merchant Finance Limited. A function was held last night to celebrate the launch of the company's new name and four new products. The four new trade finance products include Trade Finance Local, Trade Finance Import, Trade Finance Export and Agri-Trade Finance. Reserve Bank of Fiji Governor Barry Whiteside says the credit institution has played an important role of servicing customers in sectors which the banks may consider as high risk. The launching today is also testament to the confidence of our financial institutions as they continue, like Merchant Finance Limited, to evolve and develop products that specifically meet the needs of a developing market. Indeed, the board and senior management must be acknowledged for the strategic direction and for rising to the challenge to design and offer products to fit the requirements of their customers. The launch coincided with the company's 24th anniversary this year. Afternoon showers were experienced over most places. It was a day of mixed temperatures today. Bar was the hottest on 33 degrees, while Nandi and Lautoka were on 32. Suva managed 31 degrees, while Lombasa was on 27. Sabu Sabu was the coolest on 27. Cloudy periods with some showers over Yasawa Group, Lomaviti Group, Northern Lao Group, the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Isolated heavy falls expected. And the further outlook is brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, fine apart from afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. And recapping the main stories for tonight. Police have received complaints of sexual harassment in evacuation centers. Government and the United Nations today launched humanitarian appeal for people affected by Cyclone Winston and RFMF police and correction services heads appointed. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jack. Jackie Spade, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Nimo the Mamba. I'm Sarah, I'm from Tawa, and I love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, Today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulamila. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. It rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.